One day my cousin Chris drops down his, uh, his, his worm and a huge largemouth bass. This thing must have been five or six pounds. We caught a big catfish. Now it seems like it was huge, but it's probably only about this big. And we reeled and reeled and reeled that sucker in, and the line broke right on shore. And it grabbed the worm, and he set the hook, but the gap was this wide, and the fish was this wide. There was no way it was ever going to fit through that crack. Sure, and it was so tired, it flopped. And I remember taking my shirt off and laying down and just scooped it up and brought it on shore. So and I my knew cousin no Scotty said, I'll get it. And he dove in the water and swam up underneath the dock. But in the end, the fish got away and the hook got stuck in his bridges. Usually, to keep a fish, the fish must be over the legal size. The legal size for different species ranges in different areas. However, balanced harvesting is used to divide the total catch between smaller and larger fish. This way, there will be more focus on catching mostly smaller fish and only a few big ones. This helps keep the population healthy by letting more of the older, larger fish with better genes and more successful reproduction live. Bigger, older fish produce more eggs that are a lot healthier than the few eggs that smaller fish produce. By having more eggs, this helps give the big fish a better chance of passing on their big fish genes. It's really important to let the big fish get away because they actually are better at reproduction. Um, larger females produce more eggs than smaller females, and they also just have a lot of knowledge wrapped up in those little fish brains that they have survived long enough to become big fish. And so we don't want to lose that genetic diversity that carried that knowledge. You know, the more that we deplete the oceans or the rivers of the big fish, the less likely we are to have bigger fish in the future. They're obviously growing as they get older. Um, some of the other issues have to do with what the larger fish do in the ecosystem. You know, a lot of times, there are symbiotic relationships with some of the smaller fish and the bigger fish and some of the non-fish species that also live in the rivers and oceans. And so if we're removing some of those big fish, particularly if we remove them before the point that they get to sexual maturity where they're able to be the ones procreating and you know offering the next generation of big fish, then we're just lowering our chances of our ocean being able to feed us in the future.